Welcome back everybody's Destiny Jesus here. Today we're going to be doing three levels of solo cash cups. Loads of you guys have been asking for this, so here I am delivering it. And we're using Reason as our pro player. This guy placed absolutely insane. He got third place in the most recent cash cup. He's been really informed in terms of W King and also just all his mechanical aspects. And he got an eight kill win in a really stacked lobby, which is like Storm Surge, every single moving zone. And he played it pretty much perfectly in terms of height takes and a bunch of things that you can guys can learn from. We're also be doing two pro players this video, so we're looking at Tomzy. He was finished around 500th place on lead one. There's a couple of major mistakes that were costing him from making money. Previously, he's got third in the cash cup as well, so we're looking at him as our secondary pro player. Then for our semi-pro, we're going to be looking at Fury. He recently just got my solos masterclass, and he's basically been watching all the videos and trying to implement it. And he was best placed ever where he got 142nd. I'm also going to be doing a full rod you with Fury breaking down what he's kind of learned from the course over on my masterclass. So make sure to go check that out as well. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and make sure to like if you did. For our semi-pro player Fury, he was actually doing a high glide drop where he basically scout this Viking building, the south building, the log jam, the beach as well, all have the alternative option to go into holly hedges depending on how many people are. This is really good for cash cups, especially because it's so random with who you get in the game in. So here, all the other spots were taken, actually contested. So he's able to just land at holly hedges and split the loot with the other person. For our pro player, we're looking at Tomzy. He's previously got third in a cash cup during the old season, and he basically didn't place too good in this one. He only got about top 500. So we're looking at what mistakes he made during his mid-game rotates off spawn, and also a couple of things in games that you guys can learn from, from a pro who's making a couple mistakes and some things that they need to fix. First things first is just his drop spot. He's landing a misty small side. Basically, it just means that he can either fight somebody or spawn every game, or he has the option to just disengage up towards these secondary spots up here and then get some extra loot as well. He can also just go towards Misty Lake and Fish, which is extremely strong at the moment as well. Now for a reason, let's have a look at his old spawn and what he's doing. He used to be really known for going Holly Hedges, but he's changed it up and now he's landing over a log jam. Now let's see what off-spawn basics he's using that you guys can use to apply and win your spawn fights at any type of spot that you're landing at. First of all, this other player lands in this other building, which just means automatically he's gonna have more mats and also a little bit more chests in terms of losing potential over there. So what Reason does is actually look some counter damage him off, him off spawn immediately. Doesn't get it, so what he does is actually go down, get all of the non-boxes and all of the natural shield available downstairs. So after Reason gets all this off spawn shield, there's basically three advantages that you can have in an off spawn fight. It's either height, shield, or your mats. He knows the other player is always going to have the mat advantage, so he just gets a little bit on this backside here. Then he gets this damage advantage where he dinks the player instantly, and he just goes for this height take. Very simple stuff. Even with his low amount of builds, he just goes for a height take, and then aggroes him immediately, going for these wall places from different angles. Notice how Reason changed up his angles several times, where he swaps up and down, goes from different angles from side to side, trying to go for this piece control. Then he gets the right-hand peek in, forced to stare, and then again, even to finish the fight, he completely switches his angle, goes to the other side, and wins the aim duel. In our spawn fight, if you know your opponent's likely to have more mats, you need to go for a height take as quick as possible, and then you can instigate the fight from there and close out. Now, whenever you're playing a cash cup, I'd highly recommend not taking any mid-game fights past your first game. What you can do, however, is try to just scrap loot and look for third parties in the mid-game fight. Rather than taking a straight-up fight, try to push into a third party, especially when they've been build fight, you can look for a chop out, or alternatively, you can just look for shots on the other players. So here Fury just waits for a long time, trying to get a really nice timing on the third party when they're both low, and he heals the shield cracks as he pushes in. It's a snipe on the first guy, and the second guy's a pretty easy cleanup because they've been full fighting. Again, you want to try to rush in and interrupt the fight as quick as possible while taking the minimal damage and kind of approaching the safe way. So he gets both Elims there, and that's two free Elim points, and he's also in a good position on zone where you can just rotate late. Now, the easiest way for you to avoid mid-game fights, since it's a big mistake that people make, is always trying to rotate away from congested areas, especially near Tilted and stuff like this. You want to try to be as early as possible leaving, and as you can see here, he just takes a rotate path where he goes through dead side, avoids cutting through the open mid-map area, a lot of people rotate, and avoids risking Colosseum. Instead, just goes far north, and then rotates dead side of first and second, and then gets into good position for this end game over at Steamy Stats. The one thing that Tom Z probably needs to work on is basically just the fact that he's not getting any metal on his actual mid-game path here. He basically only has 100 metal, which is basically what he got from chest. And you need to try to find a secondary spot where you can farm metal on your mid-game rotate out. It's pretty much the most crucial thing. But here he basically just takes a fight, trying to get himself in a better situation going to end game. Gets a beam from just playing around Ryan right Peak, and then he takes this fight in the edge of third zone. Gets the disconnect, then gets the elim, and then he gets pretty stacked off that as well. Thing is, you've always got to consider the risk of taking a fight right here. If that fight dragged on too much longer, then he would basically be in Storm for a long time. And he actually also misses a big pot 
on the guy's loot as well. Now he's the whole way deep in Storm. His max situation has improved, but he's still really bad on heals, and this endgame is going to be pretty scuffed for him as well. So since this is the last game of Cash Cup, and it's really stacked, basically everybody has gone towards center zone, and there's about 70 people in the center of second zone. What Reason is doing is actually immobilizing himself on edge, trying to look for somebody coming in here to get scrap loot or scrap shield, and he'd easily be able to get a free kill since he's got attack. Really good play, and also the fact that you might be thinking, oh, everybody else is in send second, you may as well just rotate there. It doesn't really make too much of a difference. As soon as third zone pops, he's able to just sand rotate into center and get a really good position as well based on that. Sand rotates, and he's got a very free rotate zone, whereas everybody else has just been in the middle of zone, and it's going to be quite scuffed for them to move later on. So on this 50-50 rotate, our semi-pro actually uses a bouncer to rotate here. Again, this is really good standard stuff where you just scout, try to get a lot of info, and then do your rotate path, it breaks the bouncer behind him, and then box up. One thing you need to be really aware of is the fact that he's only got one big in this situation, and you want to try to save that big for as long as possible, so you can go into first moving on 200 HP. He gets tagged up there, and this is normally where I'd recommend, especially this something in my course, is just recommending pausing as you're rotating to 50 50 zone. Right now, there's only one player in front of him, and as you can see on the map, there's like three or four players stacked up behind him that are going to rotate on top of him, and you always want to try to be in an elevated spot as you come into 50 50 zone. So you should pause here and wait a second and also try popping that big or just saving it for a while and not letting yourself get tagged up. Instead, he early rotates, gets looked at by the other people across the river, and now he's in kind of a scuff spot on back edge where there's other players looking to fight him and all of these other players on this back edge are going to rotate on top of him and it's going to mean he's in a bad spot going into first moving. Now for our pro player Tomzy, what he's actually going to go ahead and do is rotate in towards the edge of fourth and you actually want to try to put yourself on an elevated layer here. This basically just gives him a lot of options in terms of scouting. You can see everyone near him, even though he's pretty shambles in terms of HP, doesn't really risk getting box forward or anything like in this position. So now as he gets his max distance rotate, you can see he basically just scouts out where the other players, who is moving around him and also he looks and just tries scouting where this drop would be available. Now as he begins moving, he basically just covers his right hand side, throws off his back and he wants to get this drop and mainly because he can just get bounced from that and he's got no movement at the moment to actually use during the end game so he gets bounces gets a big pot as well as an ak upgrade and he basically can just chill in this position here and then just wait for a second bounces in again that bouncer probably wasn't necessary mainly because it just means that he doesn't have an extra one for first moving which he wants to have because he's pretty shambles on mats does the correct play here where he basically takes his time and pops the med kit make sure that nobody else is going to spray him while he's popping that med kit especially because his mats are quite low right here on fourth zone when it's really laggy and everybody's trying to go for storm surge the reason is good on storm surge because that kill earlier so what he does is actually go ahead and grab a crystal and he knows he wants this kill at this point he realizes this player next to him is shambles, hasn't popped any minis after getting cracked early and is spraying. So he gets the ball low, then gets some white tags on the opponent, instantly blocks over Cobbler's key angles, and then Crystal phases in. Breaks the cone, gets the ball one shot, Crystal phases in, and gets a max match refresh before moving zones even start. If you're confident enough with your aim and your ability to actually get in the box and you have an opponent near you that's weak enough, 100%, this is one of the best plays that you can do because now he's 5-5-5 five, five, five mats, he's got floppers as well for endgame and he's in a really good position to just rotate to first moving as well because he can just stand rotate from here. One thing that Reason does here on 50 zone is he actually position himself towards low ground. This is really nice because it allows him to use sand rotates later on which are extremely broken at the moment and also just the fact that he can look for more op kill opportunities on players near him. He's got this loot pile next to him which so expands in with the extra mats that he has. Now he starts looking and trying to use other players near him to go for kills. One thing you need to think of is just the fact that Solos is a team mode and you need to work with other players to actually go ahead and get kills, especially near the end game like this. Here's this player gets cracked, drops him in his box, able to get all this loot. Again, that's another max max refresh straight before moving zones and puts him in a really good position where he's got everything he needs in the world. One important thing to note here is just the fact that he's got floppers which are extremely strong at the moment and allows him to go for a height take or any kind of play with this later on to go for kills as well. All right, in the same game from our semi-pro here, we're going to see a couple of mistakes that I guess you guys are probably making as well. And it's basically, whenever you get a zone like this, you need to try to stay towards the front side. Instead here, he lets other people go ahead of him. Everybody kind of gets in front and now he's late rotating and it's quite hard for him to actually utilize his harpoon or try to find a refresh through a box site. So you can see here, he goes late several times. Everybody else is already ahead of him and he's kind of just in this middle of the pack territory and now he gets in he's only got 10 seconds to try to look for a harpoon refresh or look back and he actually makes a mistake of not even trying to use this harpoon at all just sits a healing looking at people near him he should be looking on low ground or something trying to find that loot that you can harpoon or try to hold somebody with his ar now his zone pulls far again makes another mistake where he rotates through here you could easily try to go for just a jump in play or something and catch somebody off guard with a harpoon at this point but instead he just rotates for free also, another mistake that I noticed is just the fact that whenever you're hitting a bouncer, try not to jump during their names. It makes you go up a level and then you get in a really clustered spot like so. Now he's trying to rotate, gets jumped on from a purple tack from behind, gets in a position here where he instantly minis. This is probably the worst thing you can do is instantly trying to mini. You should always be making sure that you look where the opponent is 
because in this situation the player is trying to exploit in and he also gets edited down just kind of bad awareness and trying to go for that heal rather than looking for any kind of counter peak or a shot and return as they jump in now Whenever you get a max distance zone, especially in a did game like this one, so there's only 14 players like left right now, there's a lot of good players in here, but it's not too stacked at all. And what you want to do whenever you're in one of these really dead games is you don't really want to take kite. It's going to be very difficult to try to take kite in a 15 moving, especially with the max that it is right now, mainly because the other players are going to be in a really good position to shoot you out and it's going to be quite hard to maintain it. What you should have done rather than going upwards and looking at towards height here is basically play on that lower mid ground layer then tries to get a refresh she has a harpoon which she doesn't really use once to actually get loot instead he tries to come up towards height comes the whole way up here trying to look for a kill gets tagged up a little bit now he's scuffed on backside there's going to be a lot of players rotating ahead of him just using really cheap rotates on low ground that he's not using now, as he actually tries to go for this height holding, as he's only got 15 builds to actually maintain it, it's going to be extremely hard, and he can't get a refresh. Who is he meant to kill here and use his harpoon on to actually get the kill? It basically results in having to go for a 50-50 play on this guy, where he goes straight into the box, and then misses a couple of his scar shots and dies. If he decided to just play low ground there, he could have easily rotate to the edge of Storm, used a couple bounces, then he'd be able to use his harpoon properly on low ground and get a kill. And then if you got a decent amount of mats from that, then you could obviously look towards height and trying to retake it. So now let's have a look at how reasons actually it was take high ground and win the game from that there's two different height takes here which i think you guys will learn a couple different things from as the closing of this video height in solos is pretty much broken things because it's very hard to retake but it is very easy to lose if you play it incorrectly so first thing reason does here is just really good awareness as he bounces front side realizes that other players are building for him so he's able to just go ahead and build up crank up and look for height and then look around and also see where the other players are and rotating in this is a really good method of just getting kills on first moving if you need a kill but siphon like reason does here he makes a couple mistakes in terms of positioning on height. He's on too low of a layer here, so it's quite easy for another player to sneak up and get beam, or just to get shot from low ground. The other player sneaks up and actually takes his height, and instead of risking his game build fighting a low HP, and the fact that he's got full floppers here in both of his inventory slots, means he can just play a lot more passive and slow. Gets into the end of first moving, now he's going to look for this flopper height take, which is something really useful that you can do at the moment, that like catches a lot of other players off guard. So you can see here, Reason doesn't make any space out of his box, doesn't even edit out just yet. He's waiting to go for this height take and let storm overtake him and then he can look up and see what the high player is actually doing he does a perfect thing gets in his cone scouts it takes a second to even eat the flopper and storm without even moving forward and then he starts making his way for this high take gets a beam on his opponent this is basically the perfect way you want to do this try to get the beam on the opponent and then ramp towards them or then go for the actual height take in terms of a balance of play gets a 70 tag on other opponents so they're able to counter shoot and look back for a second what he does is here is perfect is basically keeps on playing his floppers and storm and then he's going to look for a high ground retake when he's got that health advantage in just a second here pops another flopper now goes for the balance of play up reconnects high ground as other players forced to drop because of their hp and then he looks down and is able to get the elim on the player as well Bounces forward, trying to look in for that front side reconnection. And he's also able to jump in the box here and get his refresh for endgame, which is just what he needed. Now again, the fact that he's just got that refresh on those other players doesn't mean that he need, it needs to go up for height. He can play on this mid-ground position here with his mats for a couple of seconds and just chill for a second and then go up for height and see what it's looking like. He does this perfectly, plays second height, gets towards front side of the next moving zone, which is third moving, then starts looking up and seeing what this other player on height is doing. Realizes they're not paying the best attention, so he actually goes up for a build fight with his mats. Really nice cone and height retake that he does there. And then he's able to just secure high ground and chill and basically just play this into a heal off. He has everything he needs for a heal off, so he shouldn't risk anything in terms of just trying to get a kill just yet. Really good AR pressure downwards. And then from here, it's pretty simple. Him just sitting on height, he's got the refreshes that he needs. He's also got everything he needs to win this game in terms of heal off. So he's going to play for that. Normally in solos, a game won't actually go off to a heal off at all. But it is very useful to have these heals in inventory just for the 1v1 at the end. Right here, he just doubles back into zone about 10 seconds left. He uses his floppers first so the other player doesn't realize what he's doing. Make sure you don't use chug splashes since they're way too loud. And the other person will realize that you're going for a retake. Takes his time. Now he ramps up and starts using his chug slashes. Very simple now to win the 1v1 versus Pablo Wingu. All he does is just play his heals for as long as possible and doesn't even peek knowing the other player is not healing.
That's all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to go check out the masterclass. First link in the description. We've got reasons full routine over there. We've also got loads of volumes and stuff. I think we should have a new video coming out of a pro player very soon. And also I'm going to have a full volume with Fury who placed 142nd as best placement yet. And basically breaking down a couple of mistakes that he was making in addition to this video, as well as just a bunch of things that he's learned from, from the course and how he's implemented them.